Greetings, fellow Conquerors. This is Darkfire Slide, and welcome to the return of EU4 content here on the channel. I took a bit of a hiatus, mostly because I was frustrated with uh, Paradox's DLC practices, as I've made pretty clear in a lot of my recent videos. And so, you know, those of you with keen eyes or who are actually watching, I know a lot of people like to just listen. I, I myself typically only listen to Let's Plays. I don't actually uh, sit and watch. Is that we're playing on version 1.12.2, which is the final hotfixed version of the Common Sense DLC. This means that the next DLC, the Cossacks, has not even come into existence yet. Mare Nostrum, with its changes of sailors, is not here yet, and some of the nicer changes from Rights of Man are also not here yet. Uh, more importantly, institutions are not yet in the game, and so we are back in the world of westernization. However, that's not really going to bother us too much because of the campaign that we're going to play, which, thanks to you guys, we have been able to choose. Now, the voting process was a bit of a bad idea on my part. I should have uh, set up a straw poll where everyone could have voted and we could see an actual tally. However, at the, mo at the current moment, at the time of this recording, the comment with the most votes was to play Republican Prussia. However, the problem with playing Republican Prussia is that Prussia doesn't exist at the start of the game, so we're going to have to make our own work out of that. Uh, however, the second most voted idea that I gave was the Pirates of Pomerania. So, here's the thing. Pomerania has Prussian culture, which means that if we, you know, get all the required provinces, we ourselves can actually form Prussia. So, here's going to be the campaign idea. What we're going to do is we're going to start out as Pomerania, and we'll go ahead and load the map here. Very dangerous thing to do in this version of the game because they had not made a lot of the uh, graphical and like optimization updates that they made up to this point. So the game is somewhat unstable, as it is. But as we can see, here we are, Pomerania, with uh, Duke Vordislav, the ninth Griff. <laughs> of the Griff Dynasty. Those of you familiar with Red vs. Blue may find this uh, rather humorous, but anyway, so our plan is to basically take over all of Brandenburg, all the Teutonic Order, and maybe beat up the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth a little bit. And so the idea is we're going to play, you know, do all these things, and then we're also going to try to sort of invade into uh, Sweden and just, just around the Baltic in general, because Pomerania has a ton of ideas dedicated to uh, privateering and being piratey, basically, uh, including this first uh, national idea that they called Legacy of Pirates. You know, being a busy network of, of lucrative trade, the Baltic Sea, and thus the northern German coast has always been a very good place for piracy. That sentence is really weirdly written. So much so that even the rulers of these small countries often participated, more or less openly. There's nothing like stealing lots of gold from one of your rivals. And so one of the things about this uh, playthrough is that we're basically never going to um, protect trade, and instead we're almost always going to uh, privateer. Now, I forget how effective privateering is in this version of the game, and to be honest, I forget a lot of things about this version of the game in general. But, we're going to see how differently the game played back in this version, uh, which would have been about a year or two ago now, uh, when this version was live. Um, and so, basically, I'm going to put my you know, money where my mouth is and actually uh, play this, this nation. Um, now, what are some other concerns at the start? Well, first of all, we, our development is not great. Um, and we do have the development system because Common Sense added in development as a concept into the game. Um, so we still have our base tax, uh, base develop, or base diplomacy, base diplomacy, it's basically base diplomacy, our base production, and our base manpower. And we can still improve them in the same ways, although it is not nearly as effective as it is in the current iteration of the game. Now, the other alternative start would have been to start as Brandenburg here, who has a ton of, well, who starts out with the very, very powerful Prussian ideas. And so one thing we're going to do is as we play this campaign, um, we're going to leave it up to you as to whether or not we keep our Pomeranian pirate legacy or if we decide to, when we become Prussia, adopt the new Prussian ideas. Now, I do want to give an honorable mention um, because it, it was settled by one vote. One upvote decided against playing as Granada and trying to do this this whole this whole jazz and to be honest 
I feel like in the current version of the, you know, the the modern updated version of the game, I feel like the Granada start is suicidal at best, or at worst, uh, unwise at best. Um, and I will say to those who who want a Granada-like experience, play as Morocco. Just let yourself have a little fun and play as Morocco, who can more readily form Andalusia, uh, especially because um, they can quite easily, first of all, attack Granada, but then also uh, attack Portugal as well, take some of their land, and get into a position where they might actually be able to fight Castile, depending on who has rivaled them, of course. Because one of the big RNGs about this starts, about this start is that, uh, you know, if Castile allies France, it's basically over for any fun in that region. That being said, magic can happen sometimes, and we're going to play as Pomerania. So, uh, what are we going to be looking for strategically in this campaign? So, we're going to be building a lot of ships. We're going to be focusing on developing our, our coastal provinces. Um, and yes, actually using development, I think, um, as long as we have the points to do it. Because we are a Western nation, so we should theoretically have an overflow of points um, that we can use to then uh, turn these into big, bustling cities that we can build lots of boats from. And this is useful for us because we start out with light ship cost minus 10% and 25% better trade range. Uh, trade range I'm not too keen on, but the light ship cost is pretty effective. And now those of you, I'm not a master of trade. So those of you in the comments who have advice on how to utilize this 25% trade range, please let me know because I would love to uh, better represent this ability because I don't think I don't think it's very good, but maybe you know something that I don't because I'm not a master of trade. Um, same goes for like trade steering, like trade efficiency speaks for itself, gives money, um, and the better merchant is going to be nice as well. Perhaps the better merchant or the extra merchant um, combo is with the trade range in a way that I don't foresee. Um, however, the embargo efficiency and the privateer efficiency are also certainly going to help us a lot here. But that's enough talking. We're seven minutes into the video and we haven't even done any gameplay yet. So uh, let's go ahead and launch in. All right, here we are as Pomerania. We have a free military leader. Um, I don't know why, I guess this was a pop-up. Oh, you can, oh, this was a pop-up in uh, this version of the game. We don't actually have a free military leader. And we are currently rivaled by Brandenburg, Saxony, and the Hansa. Oh yeah, I forgot. In this version of the game, the three uh, cities of Bremen, let's see, Hamburg, and Lubeck were actually all a part of a single nation called the Hansa, which was a very, very surprisingly powerful uh, trade nation who made tons of money and was totally influential um, in all the things. And they're our rival. They hate us. They hate our guts. And that's really bad because uh, we would like them to be friendly towards us, but uh, unfortunately, as it goes at the moment, they are not. Uh, however, we... let's see. There's a... Bohemia likes us because we have the um, same dynasty, technically. Uh, because they are interregnum at the moment. Okay, so it looks like what we could do here is get a very, very easy alliance with Bohemia and leverage that to uh, potentially defeat Brandenburg here. Uh, now, how does the Teutonic Order feel? The Teutonic Order hates our guts, um, but the thing about the Teutonic Order is they are not actually part of the Holy Roman Empire, um, which means that they're not going to be able to um, attack us, which is very, very convenient. Uh, one thing I'm going to do very quickly here is I'm going to change my terrain map mode to my uh, s simple terrain to the simple terrain map mode because, um, well, this is pretty like pretty honestly, like I do like this rendition of the world map. It's not very useful for gameplay. <laughs> so let's see, let's see what would I, what do I need to do? Right click to select this is one of your primary map modes. You need to deselect one of your current modes first. Okay, so there we go. So now we got our simple map mode and turned the map into this ugly color that tells us what is uh, going on here. And as we can see, northern Germany is just nothing but woods, which is a problem because all these uh, lands we would potentially want to develop are um, woods, which makes them worse for development. Um, one thing we will eventually want to do is attack um, the Teutonic Order. And one thing that could be very good for us is to secure a temporary alliance with Poland, um, who unfortunately is rival of Bohemia. Um, and with this temporary alliance with Poland, uh, we could theoretically attack the Teutonic Order, uh, claim Danzig for our own, um, but the problem with that is, um, the second we take Danzig, Poland will hate our guts, 
and we don't want to deal with that. So I think we're just going to lay off Poland into the Teutonic Order until we have better allies and more land, basically. But here's what we're going to do for now. We're going to rival Brandenburg, because we do plan on attacking Brandenburg. Uh, we're going to go ahead and rival uh, Mecklenburg, because they are our neighbor and we would very much like to have their land. And our only other options are Saxony, the Teutonic Order, and the Hansa. And of those, let's take a look. So, Saxony is enemies with Brandenburg and Bavaria. So, by rivaling them, we could make good friends with Bavaria. Uh, especially considering uh, that Bavaria is not enemies with Bohemia. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Bohemia... Or unfortunately, they have rivaled Bohemia, which means they would be very hesitant to accept an alliance uh, if we allied Bohemia, which is going to be basically our big plan here, um, since they are going to be the most willing to accept alliances. And one thing you'll notice almost immediately is in this version of the game, um, people were much more receptive to alliances, um, especially to nations that weren't as big uh, like we currently are now as Pomerania. Um, we, you know, we definitely have a lot of, uh, you know, things going for us here diplomatically that we probably wouldn't have in the current version of the game, which is just something, to me, that's always very interesting to think about. Now, one thing we're going to hope for here is that Sweden beats the, you know, ever-loving crap out of Denmark here so that um, Denmark doesn't have this ridiculous union because we would very much like to gain access to this portion of the sea um, in order to you know, do things like uh, trade and privateer and all sorts of fun stuff. But for now, uh, our force limit is 9, so we can build up to 9,000 troops. We're not going to build that at the start of the game. However, we are currently making 3 ducats a month, um, most of which is from trade. Um, and I can only imagine that that's because we are making a healthy amount from the Lubick node, which is a very, very healthy node. Um, now, we only have one trade ship at the start of the game here. Uh, so, naturally, what we're going to do is we're going to privateer. And let's see if we can make a good bit of money anywhere. I don't think this has the... So, so I think in this version of the game, uh, it doesn't actually tell you... Uh, it tells you how much you would profit, but not by a lot. And uh, it looks like... Where we would benefit the most is here in the Baltic Sea, uh, where it would raise our uh, trade value from 0.23 to 0.57, um, which is quite a bit, and especially because we're transferring from the Baltic Sea, so we definitely want to do that. And then we have this uh, cheaper light ship cost, but because our force limit is almost full, uh, we're only going to be able to build one light ship at the start of the game, and that's also because our treasury is not the greatest. <laughs> Right, we have a couple of missions here. We can protect against Brandenburg, which would give us uh, recruitment time, regiment costs down. We could solidify our papal relations, which is just, you know, more papal influence. Uh, or we could form an alliance with Poland, which would give us plus one diplomatic reputation. So another option that would be open to us is if we wanted to get somebody that's kind of outside the empire who would benefit us, we could ally Poland anyway, who we could then use to like drag into internal HRE wars, and especially they would be especially useful in fighting against the likes of Denmark and Sweden. But again, we run into the issue of, you know, if Poland wants if Poland wants land, then they're probably gonna like, you know, disable their alliance with us. So at that point, we would have to make a pretty big choice about um, you know, getting another alliance, basically, before Poland-Lithuania ripped us to shreds. Um, because Poland-Lithuania is and always has been um, a very powerful force in this game. And this patch is certainly uh, no exception to that rule. So we're building our first ship, and now we need to ask ourselves, is it worth it to get an advisor? We currently have a 223 leader, which means that we would definitely want an advisor, but affording one may be a little bit difficult, considering that we make 3.4 ducats a month, but we also need to save up for things like an army for when we actually want to go to war here. And we're still just trying to decide, you know, who do we want to get an alliance with? And I'm feeling a bit indecisive about it, honestly. Um, just because there's so many ramifications for getting HRE allies. Now, one thing that would be helpful for us is that there's a lot of people who just naturally hate um, Brandenburg. But the problem is that all of them hate us, too. 
So... <laughs> However, I think that Bohemia is probably going to be the best alliance option, uh, just because Bohemia is also in the Empire, so they're protected. Um, and so even though they have uh, rivaled Poland, Poland has not rivaled them. Um, oh, no, they have. No, no, they haven't. Poland's rivals are the Teutonic Order, Ottomans, and Hungary. Um, and by the way, Hungary... Nope, they've uh, rivaled Bohemia as well. So... We'll be looking for alliances elsewhere, is the main point of all this. And one potential ally that I'm seeing now is uh, Brunswick. Brunswick is decently strong, and they could serve as a good ally. Um, see, Holstein is a vassal. I forgot about that. And pretty much every other ally that we are going to be looking into here is potentially going to be just... Uh, <laughs> they're going to be a little they're going to be a little bitty uh, except for the likes of Brunswick. Brunswick is actually pretty decently sized. Um, I think taking out Brandenburg is not a bad idea, especially because uh, Berlin is a 12 development province. So we can get a pretty decent chunk of development here. 20 development is not too um, it's not like a lot. It's not like great to take in a war, but in the HRE that's a pretty uh, decent chunk that we could take there. So uh, we're going to start the game by getting a royal marriage with Bohemia, and we'll go ahead and send one to uh, we're going to send an alliance offer to um, Brunswick as well. Now, because this is EU4 and this is the HRE, we are, of course, going to be looking to basically screw over our allies at any potential opportunity while using them to uh, further our own cause. And we're going to go ahead and wait. Now, one thing that's different is that we don't actually have the old system, or the new system, I should say, of you know building up a spy network and then fabricating a claim. When we fabricate claims, we go to the diplomacy menu, we go to the covert action section, and we go to fabricate claim. And from here, we can see <laughs> um, that there's potentially a lot of ramifications for this, including up to 12 aggressive expansion penalty with up to 108 countries if we get caught, which we're almost certainly going to get caught with a 0.8% chance uh, at, you know, for an entire year. So, we'll see what happens, but we are going to fabricate a claim on Berlin, regardless of whether or not we get caught. And now that we have sent uh, Bohemia a marriage offer, and they've graciously accepted, we are, of course, going to be looking to ally them uh, pretty much immediately here. Alright, uh, Brunswick wants a royal marriage, and that couldn't hurt our royal dynasty in the short run. Uh, even though uh, we already have an heir, um, who's apparently of the same, uh, well, of the same dynasty as Bohemia. Bohemia has no, they're an interregnum, and they have no, um, <laughs> no heir. So that's going to be fun for them to deal with. I believe there's an event chain tied to that, if I'm, I, I could be mistaken. Now I'm guessing that Magdeburg also hates Brandenburg. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that. However, they're also rival to Brunswick. So, maybe not something we want to look into. Again, all of Brandenburg's, uh, you know, rivals are all, or enemies are all pretty tough, but they also usually hate me, so <laughs> I'm not really going to help us there. And uh, while we're at it, we can go ahead and search for a uh, third rival here, and why not rival Saxony? Because once we cut a path through uh, Brandenburg here, we could potentially uh, begin declaring war on Saxony as an alternate source of land taking when the opportunity presents itself. But let's go ahead and uh, we'll take the improved prestige mission because this this still gives plus one stability. I believe they changed that in recent patches. Um, all right, we will go ahead and accept another marriage from Brunswick. Now, who hates Saxony? Bavaria hates Saxony. Uh, Brandenburg and Pomerania hate Saxony. So, Bavaria would be the only other one, but uh, we are allied to Bohemia, and Bavaria hates that, so they are not going to be friends with us. And if this kind of, by the way, if this kind of discourse doesn't thrill you, this is the HRE in a nutshell. Just lots and lots of uh, political gerrymandering and, and nonsense. Uh, East Frisia... Once an alliance with us, which is this little um, itty bitty, teeny tiny little state here. And I believe, um, yeah, East Frisia is also not a part of the Empire. So they they have a lot of fun trying to 
uh, get anything done here. Although I believe, this, I, I think it's possible for them to join the Empire. If you join the Empire, then it's like whatever. Although, to be fair, you're still working with a 7 development, 1 province miner, so um, still not exactly great, but, you know, you make it work. Now, interestingly, we actually start with a better military leader than Brandenburg, uh, the Hohenzollern. Which is good. You know, one more point a month means that we will theoretically, uh, when the tech comes around, have a advantage. Let's see, Friesland has accepted the offer from Austria to become a free city. Now, I forget everything that's currently in this patch of the game. So, it's going to be fun rediscovering... Uh, all the different things that were done back then uh, during this point in EU4's history, so to speak. And oof. Brandenburg has a lot of cavalry. <laughs> That'll be difficult to deal with, for sure. We'll definitely want to hire our own. We're going to go ahead and gear up for war, since our, our claim is actually almost done uh, with Brandenburg, and so we may actually be able to attack them quite quickly here. Especially because they have no allies yet. Um, I mean, that's their fault, you know. AI gonna AI. We've gained conquest against Brandenburg, of course. Of course. Alright, Brunswick would totally be willing to join the war. Which is good. Bohemia would not because they have a defensive attitude towards us, which makes sense. That makes sense. That's fine. Um, the problem being that uh, Brandenburg has a fort in Berlin, which means we, would, we might need to get some military access uh, from some of our neighbors in order to actually pursue this war, which could be a little bit difficult, admittedly. Now, while we're thinking about all this, what I am going to do is improve relations with Poland, because Poland would still actually uh, be willing to accept an alliance with us, which is really funny. And what we're going to do is uh, fabricate a claim on uh, on Danzig once we start the war with uh, Brandenburg. Um, this could be a little bit difficult. I am going to go ahead and roll a general. Um, I Actually, I'll turn our king into a general just to see if he's any good at it. He is terrible. So we're gonna roll. <laughs> we're gonna roll another one. We get a one four one. That's pretty epic, actually. Um, that that actually is gonna win us the war. And one thing, one other thing I want to do before we start the war, um, and it is mean, it does mean we're gonna go into debt a little bit. Is uh, go ahead and pick up this uh, morale of armies guy ten percent because that is basically just gonna win us this war. Um, flat out and just make this just a really really easy uh, fight especially with uh, Brunswick's help although Brunswick's army is pretty pitiful um, all that being said let's go ahead and declare war I'm gonna go ahead and besiege this one smaller province uh, it looks like Brunswick's army is going to get uh, squished Now we are up against a 2-1-2 no siege general, which is going to make this siege very easy, except it's not going to make it very easy because this is a capital fort and we actually apparently need uh, 2,000 more men before we can actually besiege this province. <laughs> That's fine. So what we're going to do is take out some, we're going to take out uh, a couple loans. Because we're going to need to spend a lot of money to make this war work. Unfortunately, because of the way that capital forts uh, work and still work. Alright, we are going to send, uh, of course, this other ship on a privateering mission. Maybe make a little bit more money in our treasury. Um, so we get the shadow of the Empire uh, thing popping up there. And uh, well, apparently we don't need all of these troops. But I think I'm going to keep them anyway. I think, I think I'm willing to spend a little bit more money to make this siege happen, although having a disease outbreak really sucks. <laughs> Calling Brunswick into the war may not have been a, 
may not have been the best idea, in all honesty. And a little bit of a lack of foresight on my part, um, not anticipating the capital for it there. But we do have a 1C general, which is going to make this go much more quickly. And the fact that we have 11,000 troops is also going to make it uh, quite easy to um, defeat his army in battle. Especially considering that we have a 3 shock advantage at this point in the game, which is just ridiculous, basically. <laughs> Oh, and we have a 10% morale advantage, presumably, from our um, advisor. So, we're pretty set in this war. Uh, Brunswick has completely surrendered. So, let's see, Austria is attacking Venice. That's fine. And, uh, basically, now we're just going to beat the crap out of Brandenburg, and we owe nothing uh, to Brunswick. And Brunswick is no longer our ally as part of the peace terms, which sucks for him. We now have two loans, which kind of sucks, because we're spending a ducat a month on those. But uh, this is a very important war. First war usually is. We get a disease outbreak, which sucks. <laughs> Alright, we won the Siege of Berlin. Now, we don't need to get a 100% war score here, is the thing. However, the more war score we get, of course... Oh, nice. We're going to snipe a cavalry for free, get a one point of war score. Where is Brandenburg's army? All right, Poland is, has already decided to attack the uh, Teutonic Order. They're probably going to take Danzig in that war. So it was a nice dream. But on the other hand, it may make it easy to ally Poland and then uh, use them to attack a bigger state like Denmark. Now, fortunately for us here, Brandenburg seems like he's just going to let us take all of his land uh, without a fight. I don't know where his troops are hiding in. They might still be in Brunswick, but, uh... So I said to say, this has been a pretty easy war so far, and a pretty easy opening to the game. Um, I don't even see Brandenburg's army there, so I don't know where he went. Um, oh, there he, there he is. He's back. Hey, Brandenburg. Oh, Verdun is Verdun is in this war as well. Interesting. So, if we were to take another province, we have two options apart from Uckermark and Berlin. And I think I think one more province would be the the healthy choice, you know, without getting too fat too early. Um if we take Rupin, it will uh, cause, like, a divide between, um... <sighs> well, first of all, the only provinces Brandenburg would have left would be Altmark, Potsdam, and Sternberg, which would be terrible, obviously, because he'd have to get military access every time he wanted to do anything, which would be really funny. Now, that being said, if we took Potsdam, we would have a direct connection to Saxony, who is kind of another big HRE power. And, you know, we would really like to be able to expand as much as possible, but then again, this is also the HRE. We can only expand so quickly. So, that's just definitely something we're going to think about here. The other thing about Potsdam is if we take Potsdam, um, we actually worry about getting into a coalition because the coalition cap in this version of the game is actually a lot lower Like, a lot lower. Wow. Is it seriously only 25? Uh... <laughs> like, like, I don't think we have a lot of aggressive expansion with anyone else yet, do we? We currently have seven. Okay, so I see what this is saying. So this is saying this would cause negative 27 in addition to the 7 that a lot of people already have. And the, the, the cap to join a coalition in this version of the game is 30. So we definitely don't want a coalition, which means we're definitely only going to take like two provinces here. Because otherwise we're going to get like a massive coalition on our heads. And we really just like don't want to do that at this stage in the game. That is, you know, obviously would be pretty terrible if we were to get a coalition, like, right now. So, I think we're just going to take Brandenburg... Or, we're going to take uh, Uckermark and Berlin. 
this will, of course, give Brandenburg a, a bunch of new allies, uh, which will suck. Um, and we can't humiliate them either because we just don't have enough war score. Um, we can, of course, demand war reparations and a small sum of all of their worldly possessions. And by all, I mean we can get, like... Oh, they are not willing to accept a peace treaty yet. I, I, I guess it's because they beat Brunswick. They're feeling a little bit confident. But uh, it looks like this is the peace deal that we're going to be able to squeeze out here. Which is fine by me. They can keep their small one-province minor ally. Uh, especially because that's more of a liability to them anyway. So we'll go ahead and send that as our peace deal. So we get, you know, a decent amount of power projection from that. Not a great amount, but... Let's see. Austria, of course, demanding unlawful territory. And to, you know, to them, of course, I say, no, this is mine. I took this fair and square. We're still one troop over our force limit, which is unfortunate. Now, it doesn't look like in this uh, version of the game, this, you know, you forget the things that were added to the game. And in this version of the game, it doesn't actually tell you... Um, how big a rebel stack is going to be. So now we have to make a decision of how many troops we want to keep. If we want to stay over our force limit, we're probably not going to stay over our force limit. Um, and we'll merc up as we need to because we do already have uh, two loans, unfortunately, which is costing us, you know, 0.12 ducats a month total, which isn't like crazy, but a little bit of debt is not a bad thing. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. This is going to draw it to a close. If you're excited for how the series is looking like it's going to go, uh, let me know in the comments what you would like to see happen next. Because, of course, uh, Poland is actually losing his or war with the, the Teutonic Order, um, which could be a very, very interesting thing for us uh, if we could get Bohemia to go into a war with us. So, um... Just some interesting, very interesting things to think about uh, as we're getting ready for various different things, including that Denmark would actually be willing to uh, get in alliance with us now that Sweden is uh, doing his independence war. However, this could also be an avenue for us to uh, expand if we fabricate a claim pretty quickly. But, you know, talking too much, it's the end of the episode. Anyway, again... Thank you. Thank you guys for voting on a new series. I'm excited to get back into this. Let me know what you think of playing on the old patch if you're interested in the series and what you'd like to see more of as the seri series progresses. And, of course, what length you'd like to see the episode at. Just, just tell me all kinds of feedback in the comments. And, of course, like if you want to see more in the future. And subscribe if you want to get notified. This has been Darkfire Slide, and welcome to the Pirates of Pomerania. I'll see you next time.